You guys already know what this means, right? <laughs> yeah, boy, today's gonna be a good video. So welcome to today's video where we're gonna be throwing the Miata back on the dyno, but this time with E85. Now, if you know anything about E85, you know that essentially it's a power adder. You're able to get a lot more power out of your car than what you can with just straight 93 or 98 octane gas, depending on where you are in the world and what it's called. Um, you can do a whole bunch more things normally, like a bit more timing. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about knock control and stuff like that because E85 burns colder. You can throw a bunch more in there, makes things run a lot cooler as well, engine wise. There's a bunch of benefits to E85. I'll let you Google about that. But for now, let's get these things full and get back to HP Logic where Jack's gonna tune this thing and get some fresh corn juice in this thing. Do you guys ever have corn juice as a passenger? I mean, this one's sweet, she's adorable, she's got some nice curves. Mmm. So we are currently at Jack's laboratory. This is a lab now, it's official. Yeah, what I are we doing? Glasses. Safety. Safety, safety glasses? Safety, safety second. I can't help but notice that you have yellow glasses and we're gonna be messing around with something from corn, which is also yellow today. The best. But what's today's plan? So today, we are going to get your faithful built Miata off of its dependency of oil and move to a dependency of natural resources. We're switching it to E85. Hell yeah. So if you guys don't know, these are Jack's personal test tubes and I took, took these out today. Or oh, beakers, sorry, not test They're tubes, beakers. beakers. They're a bit bigger, a yeah. bit, bit too big for test tubes. Yeah. Um, and we got them filled up with some corn juice, AKA E85. Right. All jokes aside, um, what are some of the benefits to E85? Like so, why can you make more power? Okay, so, so regular gas is, like we said, it's a, it's a petroleum based fuel. Um, it uses naphtha mm -hmm. and the, the speed at which it burns is a little bit fast. And when, when you put that into a compressed environment, especially with higher boost and more ignition timing, the flame front propagates faster and you end up, yes, you, you can technically release more energy, but it creates detonation as well. So basically gas equals easier detonation. Ethanol has a completely different property to it and it burns much slower. So detonation is not gonna happen. Okay. Put it that way. I, I can't help but notice right now, sorry Jack, and interrupt you, but this is very scientific. I mean, I'm trying to be scientific. <laughs> I'm trying to, okay, I'll make it easy. I just Listen. love. <laughs> Gas, no. E85, yes. Less detonation, <laughs> more boost. More boost, more fun. Yeah. So All right. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna put the uh, Miata on E85 so we can turn the boost up without having any arguments from the motor. And, uh, and we're gonna crank that timing too, so. Hell yeah. 300 plus, let's go. Jeez, I don't know if the diff's gonna hold it, but we're gonna find out whether or not I'm gonna have to clean a mess off this thing. Um, first things first, let's get this uh, Miata on the dyno. Bring it in. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah! American Sam. Yeah. Yosemite you Sam. Any bottle ski here or what? Oh jeez. <laughs> You've been hanging out with freaking Garrett too much. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Cletus. <laughs> Alright. So I've just had Jack do a bunch of touch-ups for drivability and stuff. We also added in a few pops and stuff on D-Cell for a bit of fun. Um, but overall we're gonna do a couple runs just with the 93 that's in there to see where we're at, um, as well as to get some more burnt out of the tank so that we're at the optimal percentage of E85 in there. I really do love the sound of this turbo makes. It's quite nice. One other thing we noticed the other day is that something's wrong with my uh, cluster and the taco because the RPM limit we have set in the ECU is 7200 but the taco itself will rev to 8000 before it actually cuts. So we think the taco's out by like maybe five or 600 RPM or so. At red line. At red line, yeah. So this is what I was talking about. A little, a little bit of fun. Whoa! Oh! Dude! Yes! Yo, we done, we done, that's all I need. That's all I need. <laughs> we haven't even got the E85 in this thing yet. I love that. They really do see you. Every car, if you come to HP Logic and you want your car tuned, 
You need to make sure you ask him to wear this. Yeah, you have to actually request this. Yes. This is this is the Samet suit. The Samet suit? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Last extra. <laughs> the time has come. Can we all have a ceremonial dun 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 in comment section, please, boys? We we're doing it. We're doing it, Jack. We're double vlogging, vlog inception. Really? We're putting the magic sauce in, bro. Double Are you excited? <laughs> Go check out Jack's channel. So as we're pumping the E85 into the Miata, we can see over Jack's shoulder there that our ethanol content um, is actually going up. That's that middle gauge right there. And the higher and higher that gets up, the closer and closer it gets to that correction table for the E85 goodness. So Jack's gonna do a test pull right now and see where we're at. Sounded cool. All right. <laughs> 261. 261, and we did what? 242, uh, where we left the gas one. So this is where we're at for a start for testing. And what PSI boost was that? 18. 18. Yeah. We got a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can start playing with some timing as well. All right. So Jack's going for another pull. See where we're gonna end up. Damn. I need to put those stiffer engine mounts in. That's happening early next week, but that was mental. Damn. 263. Nice. What kind of uh, boost was that? Same? Same boost. I just, I wanted to change the curve so that it didn't start to pull off at the top. Oh, okay. So that was right to the limiter. Okay, great. Brilliant. So from here. Here. Change that to 7,500. Yep. All right, here we go. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. That's a really nice curve. Hell yeah. All right, time for another pull. This time Jack's increased the boost a little bit more. He's gonna be going in small increments to see where we're gonna land up and what the car's loving the most. This is getting insane. 265. Boost didn't come up. Boost didn't come up. Hang on, let me see what's going on. Ah! It seems like with my factory um, engine mounts, it's lifted up and hit the hit, the vac lines hit the heat shield and it's sliced it. Oh, really? So let me replace that real quick and we'll go again. So here's what just happened. This vacuum line that goes to the wastegate completely just tore and split open because as the engine flexed, it hit the heat shield, the bottom of the heat shield. So I'm gonna trim this and put it back on for now. But as you guys know, the engine's moving a lot from those OEM engine mounts. And I do have a set of hardened ones from Megan Racing that we're gonna put in that should resolve that issue. So for now, I'm gonna just trim that and put that back in there. Um, if it keeps happening, I'll take the heat shield out. Uh, just for the dyno pulls, but let's get this back on there so Jack can keep making power. Okay, so here we go. Jack's going for another pull. Hopefully this time we make more boost. Oh! What was that? Oh my God. Dude, are you trying to get to the moon? Are you trying to get to the moon? 316? Jack. That thing literally like nearly, the engine nearly went out of the engine bay. I, I have to change these OEM engine mounts. If we haven't broken them after today, I'll be very surprised. 
OEM engine mounts are not meant for power in these Miatas. Definitely need to uh, make sure you guys get upgraded ones in that. So what PSI was that? About 23, 24. Jeez. So you went straight there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's making over 300 now. Turning it down? Are we gonna leave it here? Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. Now I wanna check this vacuum line and see if we damaged it. Now it looks like we got a few more poles on her before we gotta replace that again. Man, that is insane. All right, here we go guys, another pull. So Jack's turning it down a bit to find that happy spot. It seriously scares me how much this engine moves. That sounded really good. Where we at with this one? Come on, baby. 314. And that sounded really happy. That was like 21, 22 pounds. Damn. This thing is... It's the right spot. Yeah. Far out. But this thing could do more. If we're only at, what, 22? Yeah. If we can get 25 pounds, Yeah, yeah, we need the ethanol content to get up. Right now we're at 63, 60, yeah. It's better than pump gas, but it's not as good as it should be. Yeah. So I think run a tank full through yep. and come back for more. Oh, oh, I'll definitely be coming back for more. But damn, this thing's gonna feel insane. Insane. You basically picked up another 100 horsepower. <laughs> My defense, not gonna like that. Wow. <laughs> but we're gonna send it anyway, lads. Damn, girl, you fine. You remind me of my sister, you got a pretty mouth. Jack just pulled up the dyno graph here, and this is a comparison from the top power, the max power we made on pump gas. Now, bear in mind, we are not at 80% ethanol right now. No, this is 60%. Yeah. So we are gonna be down a, a bit of horsepower, probably five to 6%, somewhere in there. Okay. So I would expect another, you know, 10 to 15 horsepower okay. to, to, to add to this. At the same boost level. It's yeah, ready. that's so good. Yeah. And but look at these comparisons. Before, you can see with smoothing, we were at 240 horsepower. Yeah. And now, 310 with the smoothing Jeez. on. So, I mean, think about that. Just with the 85 and a little bit of boost. 70 horsepower. Yeah. That's big. The yeah. jump that we just made was was like basically adding a supercharger to a stock Miata mm. or more, a turbo, you know, something. Yeah. It's a big, big game. Yeah, so, so like you were just saying, like to a stock Miata, so this is like someone just getting a stock engine and slapping on a turbo, that's 70 gain. That's the gain. That's just the gain that's we got. That's just the gain. And we just added gas. We just, yeah, we just <laughs> changed the fuel type and turned it up. Yeah. So, and I honestly think that with another five pounds of boost, yep. we're gonna be in that 360 to 370 horsepower range. Which is training and shift breaking. Shh, 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 yeah. shh, shh, she didn't hear that. She didn't hear that. Don't. Yeah. Now, yeah. Hey, look. Have to keep those tires on it, and you should <laughs> yeah. be okay. Bit. Yeah, there's a few tricks that we're doing to make sure we don't blow stuff up. And the biggest thing is the Valino um, Griva tires, yep. which are 360 tread wear. They're really great gr drift tire because they have a lot of grip when drifting, but they're also very easy to spin up and they don't put a bunch of stress on your drive line. Yeah. So it's really good. Well, I can tell you one thing for sure. So I've done scientific evidence of this. When we hit that 350 horsepower, mm -hmm. you better hold on to your shit <laughs> because we're going back to the past. Oh. Or, no, we're going into the past. Into the past. Into the past. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> oh, I love what you said so much, but I'm also depressed because you didn't have your glasses on for that moment. No, I put them on. No, it's fine. It's all good. But like we were talking about, guys, this is huge. And you can just see the scariest thing about this car is everything we give it, it wants more. And you can really see that this just wants to keep climbing. It's a massive gain and it's it's compounding as RPM gets yeah. higher. And the torque curve as well. I mean, yep. this is... Our torque is where our horsepower was at last time. Wild. That's nuts. Wow, you're going to get in this car right now and... I'm going to break something. It's a whole new car. <laughs> it's a whole new car again. This is the third time you've had a whole new car. <laughs> I can't wait to get a whole new car after this too. <laughs> and then I want to drive it. Yeah. Huh? Jack's just like, I want to drive it, but at its final form. Yeah. 
Exactly. Is this getting you excited to build something similar? It is. It really is. Because I can't let you go into the past alone. That's right. And Miatas can only fit so much. I mean, I need my tanks of E85 in the passenger seat. Yeah, well, and you ain't fitting in the trunk. They have a header roll limit too. Yeah. So it's one. Yeah. I kind of have to lean over into the passenger side as well, so my head doesn't, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. go above the roof. We don't, don't want to exceed the header roll limit. No. <laughs> one of us, if two, if, if we're both in a car, one of us has got to be gay. It ain't me. <laughs> All right. Well, this thing just keeps surprising. I think both of us. I think that's fair to say. I'm so excited and I have to add this Garrett Turbo has absolutely impressed me. Everything we've thrown at it has just been nothing but I epicness. Love, I love how compact this package is. Right? It's so compact, it's so well fitting. I mean, mm. the whole setup fits perfectly in this car. If you have one of these cars and you don't do a setup like this, you are sleeping. Mm, 100%. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's really not that much money into this. And that's the craziest thing. That's what blew my mind. When I first got this, I went to you, Jack, and I was like, Jack, why are more people not doing this? Or first, everything I was looking at. The first thing he said. The first thing he said is, why aren't people doing this? And the answer, honestly, we know is most people who buy Miatas don't spend too much money on that's them. That's true. So what ends up happening is, is when you say that you're going to take a $1,500 car, in your case, I don't know how much you paid for this car. 700 bucks. $700. When you take a $700 car and I, you tell me that I'm going to have to put seven grand into it, you start to wonder, is it worth it? But the truth of the matter is, is yes, it is. Because why do a car that's like, let's say another car that that's, you start at $7,000 yeah. and add seven to it. Exactly. Now you got a $15,000 car that's gonna be probably slower than this. Exactly, because power to weight ratio. Power to weight. And that's one thing, like, if you were to just pull this out of thin air, but driving this at 300 horsepower compared to driving, like, a Skyline with 300 horsepower, or a Mustang with three, th 300 horsepower. Way faster. Right? Way faster. Yeah. Like, like, so bad that you would wonder, is it really only 300 horsepower? Mm. I can tell you right now, this car, if you were up against a car with Mustang weight or Skyline weight, that car would have to make 400 horsepower. Exactly. To even be close. Exactly. This is lethal. Yeah. This Man. Is, this is a weapon. This is a weapon. You know what really sucks though? Hmm. I built this and then I have to give it away. But at least you know how to do it. You can do it again. That's true. And I know where to not make mistakes next time. Where, so. When, when are you giving it away? How uh, in the next week or so, it'll be out of my possession. How, how, do, you, how do I win? I mean, how do you win? You can't. It's already ended. God darn. Sorry, Jack. Damn. All of mine and Jack's ranting aside, we are thoroughly impressed with this car. And I do want to take a moment to just thank Jack a lot. Thank you so much, Jack. We're here late at night once again tuning, which just proves that you're passionate about what you do. I love this. If you guys are into cars, if you need anything, parts, mechanical work. And, and Carla's here too. Carla's here too. Hi. She's an RX-7 rotary girl. Yeah. Give us a little bop bop back there. Brap. Oh, oh. Brap. Brap, brap. We got her on the spot. I love getting people on the spot on the spot like that. <laughs> the ultimate brat right here. Yeah, we've heard this thing before. We're gonna get for drives through this later on. Man. This thing's gonna be epic. But yeah. Your car's faster. No. I think so. Yours makes cooler noises though. That wins. Okay, I'll give you that. All right. So like I said, we're getting caught up with rants again. But if you guys need any tuning work, any parts, any mechanical work and stuff like that, HP is your one-stop shop, especially down here in Florida. These guys even get cars shipped to them from California and stuff like that. So, If you've got something that you want to make faster, chances are we can do it. For sure. Call, let us know. Yeah. Sick. Now let's uh, take this filthy vape out of my car because it ain't a Subaru. Unstrap this thing and go for a rip. Sam is trying out the E85 for the first time. Let's see. Whoa, I heard that. Breaking loose, third gear there. Wow. Man, RIP transmission. I hope you uh, live to see another day. Yep, breaking loose. Woo! He's laughing like a madman. He's coming back. Reaction video here. It's just spins 
city. That's crazy. It's insane. That's crazy. I can hear you eat like in coming into boost and then losing it. It's absolutely the moment like it gets anywhere close to like 16 psi. It's just wild. Yeah, it feels really good. That's good, man. Time to enjoy. Oh, for sure. Give me this thing. <laughs> this is wild. Yeah. Jack was 100% right. This is an entirely different car now, guys. That outside clip, I really hope it gives it justice. Like, I'm gonna put this into second gear and load this up. It is spin city once boost comes on. All right, we're loading it up. It's mental, absolutely mental now. So second gear, let's get into it. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, I think this is a perfect moment to end today's video. I am beyond ecstatic at how good the freaking car feels now. It's literally an entirely different car. It just spins. Everything feels great about the car. I am starting to get worried about different transmission, but we will be uh, dealing with those next week, as well as we're gonna be dealing with those engine mount problems because in this bag here are some hardened, stiffened ones from Megan Racing that should do much better. In fact, just looking at those out of the bag, you can tell that they don't flex at all compared to like the OEM ones. Uh, I'm not gonna be surprised if those OEM ones are already broken in the car as well, even though they were brand new from Mazda. But anyways, that all aside, the Miata is come a long way since when we first found it. If you remember it, picked it up for 700 bucks, the thing ran, it had an engine knock, which then I did a burnout and it completely went away because it was just the fan belt hitting the pulley. So I still can't believe where the car's at now compared to how I got the thing. It's kind of insane. So anyways, I don't know what else to say, but thank you so much for watching guys. Smash that like button, write us a comment if you're excited. I just dropped my BMX bike and I will see you all in tomorrow's video. Peace out. Ciao, Mata.